listening to our language because our attitudes and behaviors follow out of our paradigms if we use our self-awareness to examine them we can often see in them the nature of our underlying maps our language for example is a very real indicator of the degree to which we see ourselves as proactive people the language of reactive people absolves them of responsibility. That's me. That's just the way I am. I am determined. There, there's nothing I can do about it. He makes me so mad. I am not responsible. My emotional life is governed by something outside my control. I can't do that. I just don't have the time. Something outside me limited time is controlling me if only my wife were more patient someone else behavior is limiting my effectiveness i have to do it circumstances or other people are forcing me to do what i do i am not free to choose my own actions reactive language and proactive language that language comes from a basic paradigm of determinism and the whole spirit of it is the transfer of responsibility. I am not responsible, not able to choose my response. One time a student asked me, will you excuse me from class? I have to go on a tennis trip. You have to go or you choose to go, I asked. I really have to, he exclaimed. What will happen if you don't? Why? They will kick me off the team. How would you like their consequence? I wouldn't. In other words, you choose to go before you want the consequence of staying on the team. What will happen if you miss my class? I don't. Think hard. What do you think would be the natural consequence of not coming to class? You wouldn't kick me out, would you? That would be a social consequence. That would be artificial if you don't appreciate on the tennis team, you don't play. That's natural. But if you don't come to class, what would be the natural consequence? I guess I will miss the learning. That's right. You have to weigh that consequence against the other consequence and make a choice. I know if it were me, I would choose to go on the tennis trip, but never say you have to do anything. I choose to go on the tennis trip, he meekly replied. And miss my class, I replied in mock disbelief. A serious problem with reactive language is that it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. People become reinforced in the paradigm that they are determined and they produce evidence to support the belief. They feel increasingly victimized and out of control, not in charge of their life or their destiny. They blame outside forces, other people's circumstances, even the stars, for their own situation. At one seminar where I was speaking on the concept of proactivity, a man came up and said, Stephen, I like what you are saying, but every situation is so different. Look at my marriage, I am really worried, my, life, my wife and I just don't have the same feelings. For each other we used to have, I guess I just don't love her anymore and she doesn't love me, what can I do? The feeling isn't there anymore, I asked. That's right, he reaffirmed. And we have three children we are really concerned about. What do you suggest? Love her, I replied. I told you the feeling is just isn't there anymore. Love her. You don't understand the feeling of love just is not there. The love her, if the feeling isn't there, that's a good reason to love her. But how do you love when you don't love? My friend, love is a verb. Love, the feeling, is a fruit of love. The verb. So love her, serve her, sacrifice, listen to her, empathize, appreciate. Affirm her, are you willing to do that in the great literature of all progressive societies? Love is a verb. 
reactive people make it a feeling they are driven by feelings hollywood has generally scripted us to believe that we are not responsible that we are product of our feelings but the hollywood script does not describe the reality in our feelings control our actions it is because we have abdicated our responsibility and empowered them to do so poor active people make love a verb love is something you do the sacrifices you make the giving of self like a mother bringing a new born into the world if you want to study love study those who sacrifice for others even for people who offend or do not love in return if you are a parent look at the love you have for the children you sacrificed for love is a value that is actualized through loving actions proactive people subordinate feelings to values love the feeling can be recaptured circle of concern circle of influence another excellent way to become more self aware regarding our own degree of proactivity is to look at where we focus our time and energy we each have a wide range of concerns over health our children problems at work the national debt nuclear war we could separate those from things in which we have no particular mental or emotional involvement by creating a circle of concern as we look at those things within our circle of concern it becomes apparent that there are some things over which we have no real control and others we can do something about we could identify those concerns in the later group by circum circumscribing them within a smaller circle of influence by determining which of these two circles is the focus of most of our time and energy we can discover much about the degree of our proactivity proactive people focus their efforts in the circle of influence they work on the things they can do something about the nature of their energy is positive enlarging and magnifying causing their circle of influence to increase reactive people on the other hand focus their efforts in the circle of concern they focus on the weakness of other people the problems in the environment and circumstances over which they have no control their focus results in blaming and accusing attitudes reactive language and increased feelings of victimization the negative energy generated by that focus combined with neglect in areas they could do something about causes their circle of influence to shrink reactive focus negative energy reduces the circle of influence as long as we are working in our circle of concern we empower the things within it to control us we are not taking the proactive initiative necessary to effect positive change earlier i shared with you the story of my son who was having serious problems in school sandra and i were deeply concerned about his apparent weaknesses and about the way other people were treating him but those things were in our circle of concern as long as we focused our efforts on those things we accomplished nothing except to increase our own feelings of inadequacy and helpless helplessness and to reinforce our son's dependence i was only when we went to work in our circle of influence when we focus on our own parody games that we begin to create a positive energy that changed ourselves and eventually influenced our son as well by working on ourselves instead of worrying about conditions we were able to influence the conditions because of position wealth role or relationships there are some circumstances in which a person's circle of influence is larger than his or her circle of concern the situation reflects a self inflicted emotional myopia 
and the reactive selfish lifestyle focused in the circle of concern. So they may have to prioritize the use of their influence. Proactive people have a circle of concern that is at least as big as their circle of influence accepting the responsibility to use their influence effectively. Direct, indirect and no control. The problems we face fall in one of three areas. Direct control, problems involving our own behavior. Indirect control, problems involving other people's behavior or no control, problems we can do nothing about such as our past or situational realities. The proactive approach puts the first step in the solution of all three kinds of problems within our present circle of influence. Direct control problems are solved by working on our habits. They are obviously within our circle of influence. These are the private victories of habits 1, 2, and 3. Indirect control problems are solved by changing our methods of influence. These are the public victories of habits 4, 5, and 6 I have personally identified. Our 30 separate methods of human influence, as separate as empathy, is from confrontation, as separate as example, is from persuasion. Most people have only three or four of these methods in their repertoire, starting usually with reasoning and if that doesn't work, moving to flight or fight. How liberating it is to accept the idea that I can learn new methods of human influence instead of constantly trying to use all ineffective methods, methods to shape up someone else. No control problems involve taking the responsibility to change the line on the bottom on our face to smile. To genuinely and peacefully accept these problems and learn to live with them even though we don't like them. In this way, we do not empower these problems to control us. We share in the spirit embodied. In the Alcoholics Anonymous prayer, Lord, give me the courage to change the things which can and ought to be changed, the serenity to accept the things which cannot be changed, and the wisdom to know the difference. Whether our problems be direct, indirect, or no control, we have in our hands a first step to the solution. Changing our habits, changing our methods of influence, and changing the way we see our no control problems are within our circle of influence.